This video is sponsored by Audible. Hey, so today I want to talk a little bit about hand hygiene, why we do it, how it came about, and should you do it? So, while working at a maternity clinic in Austria in 1847, Semmelweis introduced hand washing with a chlorinated lime solutions for interns who had performed autopsies. This decreased the occurrence of pure peril fever from about roughly 10% to 1 to 2%. In the early 1800s, diseases were just attributed to various different or unrelated causes, including um, something they called miasma, which they just said that it was just something in the air that was causing the diseases. So Semmelweis's hypothesis that the diseases were being caused by not being clean was considered extreme at the time and was pretty much rejected. Due to his ideas, he was fired from the hospital and harassed by the medical community in Vienna, which unfortunately made the poor old boy go a bit mad. Semmelweis's ideas were finally accepted only years after his death, when her favourite microman, Louis Pasteur, developed the germ theory of disease, which gave a theoretical explanation for Semmelweis's findings. But Pasteur was not the first to propose the germ theory, but his experiments indicated its correctness and convinced most of Europe that it was true. The germ theory of disease is the current accepted scientific theory of disease. It basically just states that diseases are caused by microorganisms. But Pasteur's main field of research was in fermentation, and he showed that the growth of microorganisms was responsible for spoiling beer, wine and milk. From this discovery, he invented a process where liquids such as milk were heated to a temperature between 60 and 100 degrees, which killed most bacteria and mold already present. He patented the process in 1865 for the application of wine and the method became known as pasteurization and was soon applied to beer and milk too. This all led Pasteur to the idea that microorganisms could infect other organisms and cause disease. But he wasn't the first to propose this idea. So many intelligent people had similar theories, including an Italian chap known as Giralmo Francastro, who in 1546 proposed that diseases were caused by tiny particles or spores that could transmit infection by direct or indirect contact or without contact at all. He wrote an essay called this um, in 1546 about his theory of infection, a theory that was influential for nearly three centuries before being superseded by our fully developed germ theory. Also, quick fun fact, the name for syphilis is derived from Francastro's epic poem, which was in three books, called Syphilis Siv Morbus Gallicus, which was about a shepherd boy named Syphilis who insulted Greek god Apollo and was punished by Apollo with a horrible disease. Anyways, let's come back to slightly more recent times. Pasteur's work was later extended by Robert Koch, a German physician and microbiologist. He discovered the causative agent for anthrax and then went on to identify the causative agent for TB, which he then won a Nobel Prize for in physiology and medicine in 1905. And then he went on to work on cholera because, you know, he's just a beast. There is another great man I'd like to give a shout out to, and that is Joseph Lister, who was a British surgeon who was around in the 18 1900s. Using Pasteur's research, he promoted the use of carbolic acid as an antiseptic which became the first widely used antiseptic in surgery. Despite the work of Semmelweis and others, hospitals practiced surgery at the time under unsanitary conditions and took pride in the stains on their unwashed operating gowns as a display of their experience. Gross. So while Lister was a professor, he read about some of Pasteur's work and he confirmed Pasteur's ideas and findings with his own experiments and decided to use his findings to develop antiseptic techniques for wounds. To experiment with this, Lister applied a piece of lint dipped in carbolic acid solution onto the wound of a seven-year-old boy who had sustained a compound fracture after a cartwheel had passed over his leg. That actually sounds quite comical. No, don't look at me while I didn't! That. I didn't! You definitely did. So after four days, he discovered that no infection had developed and after six weeks, the boy's bones had fused back together without getting, you know, all pussy and gross. His findings were published in The Lancet in 1867 and then after that he tried spraying instruments to surgical incisions and dressings and wounds with a solution of carbolic acid and he found that it reduced the incidence of gangrene and in 1868 he published a paper in the BMG on his findings. So after that he instructed surgeons under his responsibility to wash their hands before and after operations with 5% carbolic acid solutions. Instruments were also washed in the same solution and assistants sprayed the solution in the operating theatre. One of his additional suggestions was to stop using porous natural materials in the manufacturing of handles of, instrument, of medical instruments. And things improved from there. Also, fun fact, on top of that, he also developed a method of repairing kneecaps with metal wire and he improved the technique for mastectomies. And Listerine antiseptic, which was first developed as a surgical antiseptic, but nowadays is known as a mouthwash, was named after him. And also Listeria, a bacterium that causes food poisoning, was also named after the chap. So at this point we know that germs can cause disease and we know that being clean can prevent diseases. So what's with all the controversy? 
There seems to be a viewpoint recently that having bad hygiene will make you healthier in the long run because it'll boost your immune system by exposing you to more germs. This thought process is wrong, completely wrong. Although it can be traced back to a kind of principle that's true. So vaccines work on the principle that if you expose your immune system to a certain germ, it will learn to recognize and build up an immunity against that germ that lasts for years. I think that that thought process therefore arose from the idea that having bad hygiene is like giving yourself mini vaccines and will boost your immune system, making you healthier in the long run. This isn't quite how it works. Getting sick from worm germ or microbe on your unwashed hands will only boost your immunity against that specific germ. But there are thousands, perhaps millions of different types of infectious germs. The common cold alone can be caused by over 200 different viruses. To become immune to the common cold, you would have to get sick 200 times with each different strain of the virus. Even after doing that, you would still be not protected because germs are constantly evolving. When your body becomes immune to a certain germ, it is only developing immunity to that version that has infected you. Later versions of the same germ may have evolved into a different enough organism that your immune system is not able to recognize it. And that is why you get, or should get, a new flu shot every year. But again, flu shots can only do so much as it can protect you against all strains of the virus as it is constantly evolving into new strains. Vaccines consist of germs that have been altered to provoke the desired immune boost without giving you the disease. In comparison, germs on your unwashed hands have not been. To create a vaccine, scientists take a germ and alter it so that it is weakened in one way or another. When the altered germ is injected into a patient, its molecular shape is learned and remembered by your immune system through the production of antigen-specific antibodies. But because the germ has been rendered non-toxic, the patient reaps the benefits of immunity without actually getting the disease. In contrast, the germs on your unwashed hands are fully active and able to cause disease. You may develop immunity to a particular handborne pathogen, but you may also die trying. So if you want to learn more about the world of microbiology, then I totally recommend checking out this book. I read it while I was in uni and I found that it was like really great for just getting a basic understanding of the world of microbiology. And if you don't like to read, you can download it for free by going to audible.com forward slash science with Katie and getting a 30 day free trial and a free book. And of course, you don't have to download this one. They have a ton of good books to choose from that you can download for free. So if you want a free book, go to audible.com forward slash science with Katie and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.